I mean, that just overall on that match, you know, one nil loss to you know one of the top four sides. Um, how did you feel about it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's still tough. It's a tough one to take. We've become a little bit one nil specialists. Um, that one felt almost harder than the one against Western Sydney, even though we go in to win every game. There was just something about this Sydney team that that they're so successful, they have some really good players and we wanted to be really, really hard to play against. Um, so to concede again from a set piece, like it's just those little moments where you lose concentration and good teams punish you. Um, I, I thought first half we were outstanding. I thought we had the better chances. Um, I thought, I haven't seen the offside goal, but everyone said that it was, so I'll trust this one. Um, but she hit that just, Amazingly, and I thought Mickey Robertson had um, a fabulous game. And um, yeah, the thing is, we get to play them again in two weeks. Um, when I look at last season, when we talk about progression of this team, last season it was 3 0, 5 0, today 1 0. Um, really, really competed. Um, and yeah, we, we keep going like the season's not done for us, we keep going right till the end. Um, I guess the other thing about the goal was just the timing of it as well, two minutes into the second half. Um, they sort of came out and yeah. just quickly sort of got to that stage. Yeah, they did, and we spoke about it. <laughs> we said, this is, this is exactly what I'd be saying if I was um, their coach. And yeah, it's these, um, it's that, that, that five minutes after a big event that we, there's a mentality game for us. And, um, and yeah, in that, in that time, we just got to be more switched on. Um, I, I thought that we've been starting the second halves particularly well, better than the first halves. And today it was kind of the other way around. So um, we'll keep working to, to fix that. So we're switched on from whistle to whistle, even with the half time in between. Have you mentioned Mickey Robertson? Um I've been so long between games, I can't quite remember, but her on the right versus the left seemed like a bit of a different sort of starting position. Um, but also just her general game, um, you know, it felt like she was real strong out there. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought Mickey had a great game and she's been frustrated a little bit this season with um, kind of being used as an impact player. We, we, we like to think that everyone in the 16 can make a, a big impact on the game, but today um, we went with her on the right just her kind of strength in 1v1s and to allow Millie on the left to cut in um, and then we switch that a little bit just to allow again like we're still trying to help Millie simplify her game at times so just to help her go 1v1 and straight away she puts in a lethal cross that you know we, we could we could and should maybe be putting away so it's really pleasing that we have a front pack of players that we can rotate quite a lot and um, yeah, I, I think for us being able to bring somebody like Rollo on, who again can play in any of the front four, and then give Alyssa some minutes today was a real highlight. I'm just on another Mickey Mickey Foster up against Courtney Vine. You know, we've all seen sort of starring for the Matildas. She didn't get that one shot away right towards the end, but I thought Mickey did a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, I can see given how big a fit she is. Yeah, I thought Mickey was great. The the thing with Mickey is she she missed all training with us. You know, she was away with the Ferns, but that's a, a amazing experience for her to do in front of her hometown in front of her family but she is like the ultimate pro and she just comes back she does her recovery she trains with us and she watches clips we take her through clips this is what Courtney Vine will do and I thought um, I, I think Courtney Vine is a fantastic player and you saw her tear uh, like international teams to shreds and I'm sure she's one of the first t uh, names on the Matilda sh uh, team sheet at the moment but yeah, Mickey showed what she can do. I'm just on Mickey's professionalism. You know, I was struck on Monday at Waikato Stadium after the game. I guess just about, I guess, the sort of her even more, to the lack of a better word. Yeah, you've worked with a lot of players. You know, where was she ranked in terms of, I guess, having a presence um, as a as a footballer? I, I, yeah, no, she, she's huge. She's huge for this team. I think even when you look right at the start of the season when I'm on the phone to her asking her if she can be a scholarship player and she's like, yep, this is what I want to do. And she just came in and it was all about firstly try and make the 16, 
then try and make the starting lineup and everything you do you can't control you know you can't control if you're selected or not you can only control your performance and that's what she does and that's what she expects of other people and she's got a real calming sense about her um, and w when you talk to her everyone listens um, and yeah she's she's grown up around high performance and she understands it and she she brings that level of um, yeah maturity I suppose and professionalism to the squad um, were you working the phones last night trying to find a goalkeeper or <laughs> Um, just run us through sort of how that all um, played out. Oh man, if you could see my phone history. <laughs> yeah, uh, today um, we, we like to stick to the, what the Phoenix say and that's prevail no matter the circumstances and we certainly did that yesterday. So unfortunately in training, uh, Candy took a knock which meant that she spent a vast majority of yesterday afternoon in hospital. Um, whilst that was happening, obviously with Lily being injured, it meant we were searching for a goalkeeper replacement we we wanted to do everything we could to make sure that we weren't in the same boat as we were last year and putting a player in a goalkeeper jersey um, we, it wasn't fair um, to Langs last year and we didn't want to do that to anyone um, again like unfortunately we can't just bring someone in we can't just have heaps of amateurs um, so we, we have a player that's training with us a young goalkeeper who we were like perfect this is great she has everything she's been training um, but we can't put her on an amateur contract so um, she still has aspirations to maybe one day go to the state so we were never going to put that pressure on her to 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 kind of make that decision for what could be one or two games so it then got late very, very late before we realised that uh, we couldn't put her on an amateur contract as an injury replacement, which is the rules and that's fair. Um, so then it was, who do we know that is a good person that will, will help the environment and can also make some saves <coughs> if called upon and um, we all were like, Curry, Karina Brown, she's coming to the game anyway, so bring your gloves. Um, and credit to her, she was, you hear her in the warm up, she is like Brie, she was just Brie's biggest fan. She's putting off some great saves. She's like one in more reps and she's great around the team. So um, great for her, I think, to be around. Um, she's played internationally as well and she does a lot of futsal. So um, yeah, we were pretty happy that we could sort that one out. Who's the keeper at Phoenix? The, like the so we've had Amy Danielli from the 17s yeah okay. she's been in train with us doing a really good job um, yeah so hard decision for her but we were never going to put her in that position like we haven't with Millie and just on Candy um, was it like it sort of was to set piece drill or something like the players we, yeah we were just finishing with our little small sided games we do um, and she pulled off this like amazing face parry save um, and yeah it didn't end well <laughs> Um, and she was more upset that the rebound got scored, so I don't know what her defenders were doing. So she potentially going to possibly miss next week? Um, we're yeah. unsure. We're, we're, it, we're waiting for her to see our sports doc. Um, and then like, there will be concussion protocols yeah. to come back from like Betsy is. But Betsy is already two days through her five days now. So um, if Candy can go through that, then she'll be available next weekend. But we, don't, we won't mess with concussions. So. Um, we'll see what the sports doc says when she sees her. Does that mean you'd possibly take her down to Wellington? To <laughs> that is definitely a tomorrow problem. <laughs> <laughs> Fair um, just on Betsy then, though, like, you know, she's sort of had a concussion and been ruled out. Um, another thing I wanted to ask about, sorry, was um, Kate Taylor um, yep. playing in midfield. I was going to ask you about that yesterday, yeah. but I forgot. Um, you know, how clear was that 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 was what you were going to do if you didn't have Betsy? That was um, always our kind of plan B, was to, if Betsy wasn't available, was to um, put Kate in the middle. She was aware of it. Um, I, I thought she did. I, I thought she did a great job. Um, she kind of gets on the ball, helps set her down. She can use both feet, has got good range. She's somebody a little bit different, allow Chloe to make breaking runs like Betsy does. So, um, yeah, like it's a really, really good option to have. I'm just lastly on that. Um, you know, is that something that's sort of been, something she's been looking at or had in the back of her mind this season? That sort of caught a few of us by surprise on Thursday night when she played there for the thirds. Obviously she's got those ball playing qualities. Yeah. So it sort of works, but yeah, is it something that's actually been like worked on or 
been there as an option, sort of? Obviously, she hasn't been around. <laughs> she's, she's, yeah, she, she's definitely had her um, injury problems this season. It's something that's always been an option because of um, her ability on the ball. Um, we haven't looked at it previously because we've kind of relied on her so much as a centre back for for that reason as well as her defensive skills. But you, you can see that the partnership Mac and Marit Risa are developing, and so we felt comfortable with our back four to allow Kate to move up. And Kate's great; she's our vice captain. She um, is a fern. She's again like super professional. It's just like, yep, just. When we went through a couple of things with her that she wasn't sure of yesterday on the whiteboard and she's like, yep, took her maybe five minutes to get into it and then she's she's good. So um, I'm sure Yetka, I think Yetka was in the crowd watching, so I'm sure she had a little look at what Kate can do as a 6-2 and, you know, you look at Kate and Wiz together, like that's a pretty solid pair and pretty exciting for the Ferns future and Chloe is a 10, Betsy is a 10, like, yeah, we've got some pretty exciting New Zealand players here. Do you use Claudia for a bit now though? Or is that We do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's official. Uh, <laughs> well, they leave tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, so Claudia now we lose for two games. She um, has been selected in the under 20s, which is awesome for her. So we're really, really pleased that she gets that opportunity. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Great.